Hi there, this is Penelope. This is MG5004, Topic 1, Class 1, Part 2. This is a recorded version or pre-recorded version of the live lecture on Wednesday the 26th of February. 2020. Okay, we got up to this slide, we got up to slide um, where we were talking about inequalities. Now, the absolute value of x minus 3 being less than 5 means that the distance between x on the number line from 3 is less than 5. So if we start at 3, then what this is saying is that we can go up to but not including five units to the right which takes us to not including eight but up to eight and similarly we would go five units to the left which will take us to negative two that is what the absolute value of x minus three less than five means now we can write that as negative five is less than x minus 3 is less than 5. That's the same as that. Okay, we could rearrange that, shifting that and saying negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 8. What we've done is we've added 3 to each bit. We've added 3 here and we've added 3 there, just to tidy it up. So now it matches what we've got on the diagram. We can write this as what we call an open interval. We're not including 2 and we're not including 8. So it's an open interval. So on my number line I indicate that by open circles that says I'm up to 8 but I'm just not quite including 8. I'm nearly there. What about this one? So x plus 2 is less than or equal to 3 this time. Now we could rewrite that as the absolute value of x minus negative 2 is less than or equal to 3. Now what that means is that the distance of the point x on the number line from the point represented by negative 2 now, that one there, is less than or equal to 3 units. So if we started at negative 2 write that underneath and then we went three units to the right we'd end up at one positive one and if we went three units to the left we'd end up with negative five so another way of writing our original statement here would be to write it as negative 3 is less than or equal to x minus negative 2 or x plus 2, it doesn't matter which way you write it. Now we're going to take 2 away from each side, so then we get negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1, so I've taken 2 away from each side. Now that's what we've got there. Because it's less than or equal to, we're going to include 5. And less than or equal to 1, we're going to include 1. So it's different from these, the, the first example where we didn't include negative 2 or 8. So this is what we call a closed interval. And we're going to write it like that. It's a closed interval. There are rules, as you would expect, this is just a math system, so there are rules about moduluses or moduli, um, absolute values, so make sure that you learn these because, again, don't make up your own rules. While it's fine for simple examples like X and Y, it's a lot more difficult sometimes when you've got bigger things in the brackets. You can prove any of these, say, just choosing some random numbers, say negative 2 and 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to prove that a half, we're going to prove this last one, we're going to prove that one. And we're also going to prove that x plus 1 over x 
is greater than 2 for any other positive number. So we're going to prove that that is true as well. So to prove the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a rectangle and we're going to draw it and we're going to look at it and you'll see. Now you don't have to know this proof, um, it's just something that sometimes just makes things a little bit clearer. So we've got here x plus y squared. Now we know what that equals. We know that it's equal to x squared plus, can I get rid of that? No. Yes. Okay. So we know that x plus y squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. Call that number one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw x plus y as a rectangle. I'm going to draw it like that. And there's x to there and there's y. And x to there and y. Now I'm going to draw it into the into the boxes. So I'm going to go down to here. And I've just got X and Y there formatted off. And, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to divide it into quarters of the rectangle. So I'm going to, because X is greater than Y at this stage, so I'm going to take it down here. This is halfway. And this is halfway. Oops, doesn't look very good. Never mind. So we're going to call these little bits A. So this will be B, and this will be B, and this is C, and this bit over here is D. So this bit down here is also D. So let's look for X squared. So X squared is the area of the square here. The square here is not working. That square there. So X squared is going to be A plus 2 of B plus C. Now look at the area of Y squared. Y squared is going to be A minus 2D minus C. So if we add those together, X squared plus Y squared, we get 2A plus 2b plus the c's cancel out and then we're just left with minus 2d. So I've added y squared and x squared. We also can see from the diagram that xy, the area xy, is equal to a minus b plus d. Okay. What do we know about B? B is actually equal to C plus D. And B must be greater than D. So what have we just said? We've now proved that X squared plus Y squared is greater than 2XY. So if you double this, then it all works out. If x is equal to y, then we might get a different situation. Let's see if it works. If x is equal to y, then from the diagram, then those little boxes, the dotted lines are going to be the same as the solid lines. So d is going to equal b, which is nothing, because they won't be there. So then x squared plus y squared is equal to 2xy. So if we put the statement together with this statement, we would have that x squared plus y squared equals, oh sorry, is greater than or equal to 2xy. Now we call that statement 2. So let's work it through. We've got x plus y squared is equal to 2xy 
plus 2xy because, or it's greater than that, because x squared plus y squared itself is greater than or equal to 2x plus uh, 2xy. So now we can say x plus y squared is greater than or equal to 4xy. Take square roots of each side. x plus y is greater than or equal to the square root of that, which would be 2 root x, y, and now take the 2 to the other side, so half of x plus y is greater than or equal to root x, y. Exactly what we're trying to prove. Now we also need to prove that x plus 1 over x is, let's go back to see what we needed to prove. We needed to prove that we were looking at x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 2. So that's what we're trying to prove. x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 2. So let's just rewrite it um, and let's compare it to x plus y. So what we've done is, is made the substitution 1 over x is equal to y. So in the rule that we've got here, here's our rule, we're going to say a half of x plus, now y is 1 over x, 1 over x. We know the rule says that that's going to be less than x times y, but y is 1 over x, so it's x times 1 over x. So that's a half of x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to, that'll be x times 1 over x, which is 1. Now, if we shift the half over to the other side, let's do that, then we've got x plus 1 over x is greater than or equal to 12 root 1, sorry, 2 root 1, or 1, so 2 times 1, which is 2. So yay, we proved what we set out to prove. Just to rerun there, an open interval is with round brackets. And this, this curly stuff here means the set of all elements x such that a is smaller than x, which is smaller than b. And the square brackets, it includes a and b, so it's less than or equal to. It's a closed interval. And you can show all these on a number line. Draw your number line. This goes from negative 4 to negative 2 and it's closed so it's circled. The round one is the open so it's like that. So you've got the open at 1 and the open at 7. So this would be negative 4 is less than or equal to some value of x which is less than or equal to negative 2 um, and so on. I'm running out of time for this video so I will finish it on part 3. So there'll be three short videos for the whole of lecture one.